Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremiah. I'm a final year biomedical science student from Singapore Polytechnic and I think that gives me a unique position to talk about the course, which is what I'm going to do in this video. Now, many people have contacted me before asking me how is the course like, what do you study, how the lecturers, how's the environment, is it competitive? Many questions. So I'll try and address all of those in this video. And again, for legal reasons, everything I say is my opinion. It's no way affiliated or represent the school, lecturers, anyone. So the first point is course structure. Now, generally how it works is for the first two years, you'll be studying in the school. And for the third year, it's a mix of studying and internship. The first year you do common modules within the entire cohort. So all the biomedical science students does the same stuff. So that includes the major modules that are slightly more tricky, like biochemistry, physiology, those modules that can get kind of irky, which also includes your chemistry and math modules. Now, if you were to check the website and find these modules, you'll find that attached to it, there's a number of hours that you study that for a week. For example, 60 hours, 30 hours, etc. And how it works is that every 15 hours roughly equates to one credit unit. And I don't want to really explain what credit units are in this video, I'll link a video that explains what it is. But generally, the more hours you have to study it for a week, the higher credit units it is, and the more weightage that module has over your GPA. Of all the modules that you can find for first year students, a big difference that I immediately noticed was that year ones now have to do engineering math, which I would assume just by the name itself was harder than the math I have to do. So sort of tough luck to you lot. But on the bright side, they split up physiology and biochemistry into two different modules. Now in the first year when I had it, it was physiology and biochemistry, which was honestly one of the harder modules. A lot of people didn't like it as much, not because of the material. I think all of us really enjoyed learning the material. It is what you would imagine biomedical science to be, but it's just that it got quite intense at times. In the second year is where you pick your specialization of the three options, cardiac technology, medical technology, and biotechnology. And although in the second year, you pretty much somewhat do the same modules again, in the third year is where it really separates between every single one of the specializations. For example, if you notice for cardiac, you have extra modules on the anatomy of the heart, modules on how you read ECGs or EKGs, depending where you're from. And the third year highlight of going to internships would be different again. For example, all cardiac students pretty much work at the National Heart Center. They intern there as heart technologists, cardiac technologists, interns, and they help literally assisting with patients, helping to draw blood, helping to do ECGs. And for the medical technology students, you'll be interning at hospital labs, maybe running pathology slides or analyzing blood samples. I don't really know what they do. Biotechnology, I'm sorry, I honestly have no idea. You probably have to ask the school because that used to be from a different diploma in my time. In general, for all the modules and core structure that you'll see, bio and chem modules and the math modules are what I like to call core modules because they do hold higher credit units, the four and the fives. So those are the ones that you typically spend more time on. And it's also the other, not because they are less important, but somewhat non-core modules that maybe two or three credit units that talk about how do you build interpersonal relationships, what safety practices you should do in the lab, which are also important, but they're not the core modules that you typically associate with biomedical science. The second thing I want to talk about is the workload of a student. Now, it's no denying that the workload is high, but I would imagine this is the same for any path you pick JC or the different poly courses. It's no denying that there was some 2 a.m. study sessions that I had to get through, which my study playlist really helped. Anyway, just to help you better contextualize what you'll be facing if you do come to this course, I'll go through what the typical week look like for year one, year two student. So typically for a semester, you can expect about four, four credit modules. So maybe a physiology and biochemistry module, a math module, a chemistry module, an additional bio-ish module. On top of that, you'll maybe find a three credit module and maybe two, two credit modules. So for the four credit modules, typically in each week for each of these four credit modules, so four of them, you have slides that range from 30 slides all the way to 80 slides. Now, not every module goes through one deck of slides per week, but at most, it's two weeks. Very rarely does it go to three weeks. Maybe it's a super difficult subject or module that they'll go on for three weeks, but typically one or two. And for these deck of slides, they are typically there to supplement what you're learning. Some teachers teach them in class, some just give it to you to self-learn. So depending on that, it adjusts your workload. On top of that, these four credit modules typically have about three practical lab sessions per week. So that includes three reports from those practical sessions, which are due the next week. Depending on the module, depending on your teacher, these practical reports can take anywhere from two hours to two days to do and they're typically done in group work, so it also involves discussion time between your group mate. The third obligation for these four credit modules would be class assignments. Now, typically when you come to class, you'll be given a class assignment that you are told to do in that day. It's a discussion that can come from the class, and while you discuss it in class, you formulate your answers. You either submit it at the end of the lesson, 
or it's due like the next day or something. And the fourth obligation that you have for four credit modules are the tutorials. No one's gonna chase you for tutorials. Tutorials are entirely done in your own time, especially for chemistry and math. There are a whole bunch of tutorials, maybe two to six pages of tutorials per chapter. So per presentation slide, and each presentation slide may be broken down into sub chapters. So that could be multiple tutorials. So then again, it's really up to you how much tutorials play into your workload, because if you don't do them, no one's going to chase you. But if you don't do them, you're not going to know what's coming up for the exam, how the exam questions are phrased. So it's really important to do them. But at three credit modules, they're not particularly demanding in workload. It's also depending on which three credit module you do. Some of them are safety practices in the lab. Some of them are your electives. So for example, the three credit unit that was pretty much like a five credit unit to me was pharmacology. Pharmacology was a very difficult elective to take. Although it was three credit units, the amount of workload per week in terms of understanding the content and the time it took was quite high. So depending on which three credit module, but some of the workloads that you can expect are you'll be given a deck of slides. Maybe you have to do a presentation per week or given an assignment per week. For the two credit modules, it's typically not the science module. So your teamwork, your communication. For these two credit modules, the workload isn't from week to week. Typically, there's nothing week to week. It all comes in the form of a CA1 assignment or CA2 assignment that you submit over a seven period time window. And these will typically include a presentation or a report. You do have to pay particular attention to these modules. It's not a throwaway module. I do know of some people that scored perfect scores for their typical core modules, but then this was their downfall, which ruined their chances at a 4.0 GPA. So it's important to take in mind these as well. So to assess the difficulty of what I said, that's a typical week of stuff to do. It does sound quite high, doesn't it? But it's also manageable. It's possible to do so long as you dedicate enough time to it and also ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice for it? For example, if you're someone that values their time with their friends and hanging out with their family more than maybe accomplishing the assignment or getting on top of your work, then it's for yourself to manage. You can hang out with your friends and then you have a whole bunch of tutorials piling up. Or if you're someone that has to do the tutorials every week, that could also mean sacrificing on some time from Netflix. So it's really up to you to prioritize. And something I didn't mention would be the pre-class work that is expected of a student. For some modules, you're given pre-class reading. For some modules, you're given videos to watch about that content. And that could be anywhere from 10 videos or 25 videos, 30 videos. So I used to remember that in year one, semester one, every single Sunday involved pre-reading. So I dedicate the day to pre-reading day where I just go through every single material that the teacher sent me to get ready for the week of classes. The schedule of biomedical science would be quite different from other courses. More project heavy courses may have more free time out of school to manage a project. SP Biomed is still a very exam heavy course so there will be more time in class. For the majority of year one the lessons would start at 8 a.m and last to about 5 or 6 p.m. Sometimes you have time to go home at 2 or 3 because some lab practicals are alternate weeks. So one week you don't have it, so you're able to go home earlier. But not every student goes home early as well. You have your CCAs, you have group projects, so the days that alternate weeks, it's a really good time to sit down and discuss with your friends your group assignment. For year two, it's also pretty similar, although I did it online, so it's not that bad, I guess. Most students may have a mix of online and in-person school. So your schedule may change because of that. But with that, you're given more flexibility so you don't have the travel time immediately after the lesson ends. Hop on another call with your friends to discuss the group work. In year three, it was the most chill year in the sense that for my first half a semester, and how it worked is was because I only had two modules for my first semester of year three, which was shortened into one term. And then we went on to internship after that. So ever since June, I've been on internship and my internship period is eight months. And it's unique because I'm doing it with my FYP. That's why we're given more time and it's ending soon. So hooray to me. This wouldn't be the same for others. So for example, cardiac or med tech, their internships may be four to six months rather than my eight months. And as I mentioned, because biomed is a very exam heavy course, so exams do make up anywhere from 50 to 60% of everything. As you know, for A and poly, you need 80%. So 60% is a very big chunk. So just a breakdown of what that really means. Everything combined is 100%. 60% is dedicated to exams. So say for that semester, the total exam percentage is worth 70%. So 50% for the final paper, 20% for the first paper. Say for both exams, you score about 80%. 80% on the 50% of the entire module, you lose 10% right out the bat. And in total, to get an A, you only can lose 20%. So bearing in mind, you have your first paper as well. In total for exams, scoring an average of 80%, 
you could really lose anywhere from 12 to 15 percent of your entire module able to lose for an A. So out of the 20 percent you left maybe five percent and this five percent will you encompass your class participation, your report writing, weekly reports, your presentations, your group assignments, daily work. Everything can only add up to 5%. So that's the main variable factor on what impacts your content workload per week. If you want, you can try really, really hard to minimize that 5% to give yourself as much runway for your exams to lose marks. So that would mean working really hard every single day. But maybe if you took a more relaxed approach to that, that margin gets lesser for your exams, which is why maybe your GPA will be affected from there. So that's really the independent factor of poly playing in how much work do you want to put in to get that 5% down as small as possible to allow 15, 17, 18% to, for you to lose in your exams because we know that there's a tendency to make errors in exams rather than your daily assignment. Hopefully that sort of makes sense. If that doesn't really make sense, you can click on this video here that talks about how poly students are great. I would describe our teachers as very knowledgeable and very passionate about what they do. Firstly, they like to challenge you in the field that they're very passionate about. It's not to bully you or give you a hard time. They don't just give out answers straight value. They do that because at this point in tertiary education and preparing you for university, there's a certain expectation that you take charge of your own learning. No more in the real world do people spoon feed you answers because especially if you're going into the research field, for example, there's no clear cut answer. So what they'll do is they'll maybe give you a series of questions or help you on your chain of thoughts, steering you to the right direction and helping you find out the answer eventually by yourself. To have discussions with you, they're also really approachable. Never as a lecturer turn me away because I had questions. They're always open to answering them at the end of the lesson, or they're open to meeting up with you after classes, meeting in their office to go through the questions. Incredibly approachable, but you do have to make the first step of asking questions. I have a video here on how do you ask lecturers for questions. And lastly, they really enjoy what they do. They're really passionate. Most of these teachers Teaching is their second career. They've worked in the industry before, so they understand how it is and they're just trying to share their passion and joy for the industry, for the subject. So that's really nice to see. They're really professionals of that field that they're trying to teach you. Competition and the culture within biomedical science. Well, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it or there's no point in denying that there is a pretty decently high level of competition because many students that come in have the perception of going into medicine and students do get into medicine. And as we know, medicine is a very competitive course. In addition, many of the students could have gotten into really competitive junior colleges as well. So I guess that culture kind of bleeds over, blends in together, which creates this uniquely poly biomed environment. However, it's important to note that although there's a high level of competition, there's also not a toxic environment. What I mean is that every student wants to do well. It does not mean that at the expense of others. So it's not like for the exam, I know this thing, you don't know this thing, and in order to get a leg up on you, I'm not gonna tell you this thing and I'm gonna go in and get the marks for the exam. It does not work like that. Many, 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 if not all of the students are very willing to help one another. And I think a great reason that helps is for SP Biomed, none of the modules are based on bell curve. So if you do well, your friend does well, we all do well together. And to be honest, the competition does get overbearing if you yourself constantly compare yourself with others. So a great way is just not to compare yourself. Point number six is internship. I know this video is getting pretty long. My back's getting stiff from filming this video, but let's go. We're finishing soon. Internship as a biomedical science student is pretty significant. It does take up quite a big chunk of your time. Depending on which specialization you choose, your internship experience does vary tremendously as well. For example, if you chose cardiac, there would be patient experience, patient contact. If you chose med tech, it would be lab work, lab experience. So the experiences do vary quite a bit. Some of the research that some students are doing are cancer research. Some do the gastric environment of babies. Some do skin research like myself, all very different stuff, all very interesting stuff. Typically the way we get internships are we are given a list. So as a year three student, your class is given a list. On the list will be many, many internship options. And typically you just settle it among yourself in your class by a ballot system, maybe first come first serve. If you like that, you just indicate in the class chat that, hey, you're going for this. If many students choose to go for the same internship, your teacher may step in. So maybe sending all of you for the interview or maybe based on which options you rank. So sometimes we get the option of ranking your first choice, your second and your third. And based on that, you get to allocate it to your internship. Each internship typically has an interview as well from the company supervisor. So maybe the person that's in charge of the research will interview you. So just be ready for that, prepare your CV and all this sort of stuff. When the competition is too high for one internship spot, that's when the interview comes in. 
the company supervisor chooses you. And the really cool thing about this internship is you really start to see all the things that the teachers have taught you come into play. For example, one of the modules, medical microbiology, there was a huge emphasis on aseptic techniques. How do you keep everything you're doing clean, not introduce bacteria from outside into this fume hood that you're using? And that is a very big part of the research that I'm doing right now, doing skin research, everything is a bit aseptic. And all the modules that you've very painstakingly done, all the research, the writing, the skills needed to do a research paper, that's blend into your internship because maybe under the internship you're able to publish research papers, review papers, that's pretty cool. It's a very nice combination of all the experiences. Sometimes you notice that the thing that I dreaded doing in poly now is saving me because I do have that skill. So yeah, it's a very unique experience. The seventh thing on this list are student chapters. Student chapters are a thing of every single SP poly course. I'm not sure whether it's the same for other polys, but student chapters work by every course as a representative body that works to plan events for the students. So this could be t-shirt appreciations, giveaways, quizzes, custom t-shirts or jackets that I'm not wearing right now. And under this chapter, you'll be able to plan freshman orientation activities for the freshies. So that's typically the CLS Student Management Committee. So that manages the entire academic school. That's the one I was part of. And once you do activities with the main CLS school, you come down to your individual student chapters and work with people in your course. And that's when the chapters come in to plan freshman orientation activities. Joining this will also be a great way to network with your friends and seniors. So you're going to meet seniors that are able to help you if they've gone through the same path that you're going to go on. So they can offer you tips, maybe share notes. And it's also a really nice way to connect with your course teachers in a very unique way, working with them directly on projects which can showcase some sides of you that you want your teacher to see. Alright, and the last thing, thing number 8 on this very long poly video is the benefits of the flexibility that our diploma offers you. To be honest, the biomed diploma is one of the most versatile diplomas you can do. With this biomed diploma, you're able to apply for business courses, computing courses, certain engineering courses, medicine, law, and the whole range of things almost every degree at university. You'll notice that this is important and the difference if you start comparing courses, especially from different fields. So like I mentioned, a common example is business students cannot go and study medicine, whereas a biomed student can go and study business. This is definitely a factor to consider, especially if you have no idea what to do in the future. So biomed may be a good choice for you. Although if you really have no clue on what to do in the future, you may have to rethink poly. You also have the option of going overseas so that there's this thing called advanced placements. I explain more of it in this video. But advanced placements are year off because some of the stuff you do are university level in poly. So the uni recognizes that they give you time off, especially in countries like the UK and Australia. Locally, you have it as well. You may get up to one year off, but for uni overseas, you may get up to two years off. And this is a very important factor, especially if going overseas is gonna cost that much. All right, and I've tried to cover every single point that I would have wanted to know when I came in as a freshie. Obviously, there are gonna be details that are not that well explained or details that are missing out. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. Check out some of my other poly vlogs here. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.